Okay, so we've just taken off from runway 3 to left in Toulouse. I'm going to come back around and do a VOR approach onto runway 3 to right. We're not going to do a conventional VOR approach. We're going to be do, do what's called an overlaid VOR approach. And this is going to take a little bit of explanation before we actually get as far as flying the approach because it's it's quite complicated if I'm honest there's no simple way to explain and fly these approaches but let's try and give it a go so what are we trying to achieve an overlay approach is a VOR approach or an NDB approach so any non-precision approach but it's flown as an RNAV approach so what are the advantages of this the advantages is that you don't have to actually monitor in terms of your VOR track and your distance, you can just monitor these rather than actually having to physically put the inputs in. So again, I'll try and explain that a bit better. So with a normal VOR approach, we're putting in the frequency, we're putting in the course, we're locking onto the beam, we're looking how many miles we need to descend, then we're putting it into the speed, and we're doing, we're doing all of these things because we're flying the aeroplane and we're following what's written on the chart. But what we do with the NARNAV overlay approach is the autopilot flies the approach and we monitor to see if it's doing the right thing, which is in many respects quite a bit easier. It is actually how the A320 and the A330 and the modern Airbus family aircraft actually do it as well. But it was first done here on the A310 and it's not as simple. <laughs> it's definitely not as simple as on those aircraft. And this is going to take a little bit of explanation. First of all, let's make sure that we have the FMS set up correctly. So all that we have selected for our practice approach today is the VDM, so VOR, 3 to right, and none selected. So we just have the approach selected because you can see that's drawn in there. Great, so let's look at what else we've got. So we've got a platform altitude of 3,000 feet, and this will be important. And the aircraft is saying, well, I want to go down from my 3,000 foot point at 3.00, so at 3 degrees, and I want to go down all the way to land at 550 feet, because that's the elevation at Toulouse, so I will touch down here, following my 3 degree path. Brilliant, that's correct, and that's what we want. So, that looks good, so then we next move on to the takeoff approach, and we need to check this, so we've got runway 30, flaps 3040, that's good, no wind correction needed, this is our approach speed, and these are our speeds, flap speeds. Minima is 980, so 980 is in there, so that looks good. Then we need to make sure that we set that on the bug as well. That's 800, 980, so roughly around there, that looks good. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the descent down to 3,000 feet. Okay, so we're just descending down now to 3,000 foot, which was that platform altitude, remember, from the chart. Now, you might say, well, that didn't seem that complicated. Here's where the complicated part starts. So, we are currently in heading, and if we click on the takeoff approach page, do you notice there's nothing drawn in? There's no other extra buttons, there's no final app, there's nothing like that. That's correct, that makes sense. So just, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to wait until we're around about here and then I'm going to go direct to the CD3 to right point. Now, why am I going to do that? Well, we need the aircraft to be in nav. Now, that makes sense, think about it. We want the aircraft to laterally be navigating for us so that we can get it to go down vertically as well. So if it's not in nav, will not see a prompt that comes up on the FMS here. And what we're expecting is a final 3.0 to be drawn here. Final 3.0. What does that mean? It's the final approach mode, three degrees. Remember the three degrees from here? So it's saying I'm gonna fly the final part of the approach at three degrees. That's why it shows that prompt there. So, why does this get so much more complicated? If we're in profile mode, like we would be now, you can see it's gonna speed up. It will not show the prompt. 
you must be in a selected mode. Why is that? You must be in the selected mode because if you're in profile mode, it needs to swap to this final approach mode. And it can't do that while it's also still trying to fly itself using the LNAV and the VNAV. So you need to be in any other mode, so vertical speed, out hold, level change, but not profile. Otherwise, you will not see the final 3.0 prompt. So now let's go direct to the CD32 right. Let's put it into nav, and now see how we have final 3.0. We click it, it's now activated. And now do you see that we have VDEV, vertical deviation. Now I'm gonna bring up on here. Now, this is, again, a little bit confusing. So remember we mentioned that we have our VDEV on the right hand FMS. This is our calculation that we used when we were going down our approaches for all the tutorial videos. We disregard it. Don't look at it. Don't imagine it doesn't exist. This VDEV here is the one that we're looking at. This vertical deviation is calculating from where we want to start our descent down to the runway. So this is the one that matters. And it's telling us, hey, you're 2,080 feet low, which makes sense, right? That makes sense. So what we want to do is we want to start to slow down now. So let's start to get some flaps out. And I'm going to bring the speed all the way back to S speed. Now, one final step that we need to do in terms of arming the automation. We now need to press profile. And you're going to say, you told me, don't press profile. Well, this is where it gets a bit confusing. So we're pressing profile now because we are arming it. Note, we have P, DES, armed in blue. See, profile isn't engaged, it's armed. So we've leveled off, told it final.3.0, so please swap to final approach mode. Then we press profile button again, and it goes, ah, okay, we're doing an RNAV approach, I get it. And it will then arm that in blue. I'm gonna put the gear down, because there's one, one thing to talk about in terms of configuration. So you may have heard the terms decelerated approach, and you also may have heard the terms delayed flap approach. Now, in the days that the A310 was around, delayed flap approach was the correct word, way they worded it, which means you can put the flaps out while you're going down the approach. That's, that's what they mean. You cannot do that with the A310 not sophisticated enough it has a limitation written by Airbus you must have the gear down and you must have the flaps all the way out when you come to start the descent it is not sophisticated enough to do a decelerated or delayed flaps approach for these overlay approaches so I'm going to select my last setting flap and you can see I've got all the flaps out and the gears down and we've still got a little bit to go before we expect to start our descent here yeah so let's check the FMS, remember? So we're expecting it from that point there, yeah? So we can leave the speed at 160 knots, that's fine. Okay, so here we are lined up with the runway. Let's bring the speed back even more, 140 knots or something like that. So remember, our approach speed, 136. So we're shortly expecting it to start. Here comes the VDEF, you can see it here. So it's going to shortly start to actually descend itself on the path, remember. I'm not touching anything now, it should automatically start the descent down, yeah? So we're in nav, naturally it's taking care of that part, and now we should expect this to go P des and P speed. So let's wait. P speed, P des. So here we go. So now it's going to start the descent down to the runway on its own. So there we go. So now we're flying the RNAV approach and we're monitoring this, so we're 20 feet high, okay, fair enough, and now we need to start to monitor to see, is it doing a good job? So we have the DME readout here, and at 11 miles, we should be at 2,470 feet from my chart, so we are 30 feet high, it says zero high, so we're within about 20 or 30 feet, so it, it's doing a good job. So here we go, it's still coming down on the approach. And this is basically now gonna fly 
this whole approach all the way down to our minima without us having to do anything. So yes, it's a bit of a palaver to try and get it set up, but once it's flying the approach, it's much easier than actually physically flying the approach, adjusting with vertical speed, etc. etc. So you would keep monitoring to check to see if your check heights look good all the way down. And then what you do is you must disconnect the autopilot for landing. Obviously it's not going to do an auto land and you must also disconnect the auto thrust. You have to disconnect the auto thrust because it will not bring the thrust back manually at 30 feet like when you do an ILS approach. So you have to disconnect the auto thrust, okay? Otherwise it will stay in, in speed. You just, won't, you, you just won't slow down at least. So that's it really and this is the exact same procedure for an r and approach. So what we did is the same thing. So let's move on to our next topic. Okay, so here we are on a crosswind leg for an ILS approach runway 32 right in Toulouse. Now, what do we do different from the VOR approach? This is the most normal type of approach we're about to do now, the instrument landing system approach. There are a few things we must do as setup. We must select the captain nav mode to ILS. We should do this on both sides. If you don't, it's not the end of the world, but you should. We also need to make sure that we set the ILS frequency. Now where can we get it from? We get it from our charts. We can also do our tip that I've shown you a few times. So we can then click on the airport, scroll down here, 32 right, 108350. And we need to make sure that we have this correct course set, 323. Three, three, three. So that's all set. And then we need to make sure that we put our minima in. Now, we would normally just type the minima into here. So remember we type 980, and then we would put the category one minima in there. But we're not gonna do that today because we're gonna be talking about how to do an auto land. So what differences do we need to do for the auto land? The only difference is we click decision height, zero, because we're gonna decide to land when we touch down. So there is no decision height. And then when we get established on the instrument approach, we put the second order pilot in. If we do it now, you can see it just toggles. Okay, so we need to be established before we can do that. So let's change our vector to a downwind one now. So how do we make ourselves go down this approach? Well, if the selector is like this, it's in the ILS position, and we click the VOR lock, or VOR lock button, then we get lock in blue. See that? Lock comes in blue. If it's in the nav mode, nothing happens. And if it's in the VOR mode and I click this, VOR star will activate. But I won't do that because it's probably going to try and lock onto something it shouldn't. Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> you can see it tried to do that. So that's not a good idea. So that's why we must make sure that this selector is in ILS. But we don't normally press this. This is if we want to do a, a localizer only approach or ATC specifically tell us intercept the localizer. Normally we press the land button. Now the land button will arm the localizer and the glide slope in one go. Okay? Which is great. That's all we need. Now, one thing to note about the A310, it's not like modern Airbus family aircraft that have an enhanced lock star mode, it's called, where basically the flight management system actually helps it guide itself onto the localizer. This is a old school system where it basically just goes, how fast are we going? How many localizer deviation are we? And then it engages. So it even has notes and things in the manuals to state you must be this speed, you must be within this many degrees, or it will not work. It will overshoot the approach. So don't come barreling in at crazy speeds and expect it to perfectly line itself up with the runway. It's not gonna happen. So let's start to slow down. So we're gonna select the first setting of flap. Remember that's below 245, which we are, and we select it. Now I'm gonna select the speed deck all the way to S speed, which is that, 185. And I'm going to start to turn on to base. I'm going to make my life a little bit easier and I'm going to select the next setting of flap and I'm going to select 180. 180 knots 
is a good speed with the second setting of flap as you go down the approach. So that's that's a good sort of rule of thumb to have. Yeah. Okay, 195, that looks good. Excuse my appalling vectoring because I'm not an air traffic controller, can you tell? So let's make sure we have the auto brakes set as well. Low or medium, low is probably fine. To lose is a long runway. Zoom in. A little bit thermally here in Toulouse today, you can see it playing with the aircraft. Here we are on base. As you can see, the weather—it's a little bit thermally here today. I can see the aircraft's trying to, you know, trying to cope with it, and we're kind of close to the ground, only 2,000 feet above. So getting there. So shortly, I'll start the turn onto our intercept heading. Now, remember, we said on the on the VOR approach that we had to have the gear down and everything out before we started a descent. Not true with an ILS approach. You can configure as you go down the approach. It's one of the nice things about. It. Yeah, I think about now, slowly start to turn the head in. Yeah, that looks good, I think. Maybe that's a little bit early. Kind of playing with the heading bug, if you can see. Give ourselves a good interception. Let's do um, a bit more. 280, there we go. So now I'm gonna click land. GS, lock is blue, we're within 18 miles, so we can arm it. There's the runway visually out the window, and we're going to engage the second autopilot. When we engage the second autopilot, we get cap 3 on here and dual shown there. And that's only done if you're doing an auto land. I mean, you can do it on a normal approach, completely up to you. And it's actually up to the operator. Lock star, so this is showing that it's in the capture mode. So now it's trying to line itself up with the runway automatically. Here comes the localizer. There's the runway. And it's going to go on to the final capture course now. you can see it's transitioned into lock now. So lock means, hey, I'm no longer capturing the approach, I'm just on it. So it's like, hey, I've, I've made it, basically. Here comes the glide slope. I'm gonna reduce the speed back to 168 knots now. Just to have the thrust come to idle as it captures the glide slope, GS star. the gear down. Now, once you're out of GS star, so you have glide slope, you can set your missed approach altitude, which is 4,000 feet. You put the gear down, so we can arm this. Nose light to taxi, turn off lights on. Now we can select the next set of flap. And remember, we must manually set the approach speed it's not automatic, like in the A320, so 136 knots. There we go. And you can see the aircraft ballooning as all the flaps are coming out. It's doing a pretty good job of coping with it as it comes down the approach. And that's it, really. So now it will continue the approach. You can leave the auto thrust in, uh, and it will automatically land. If you want to see an auto land, please check out the Returning to Airliner series where we do one into Nice. If you want to do a normal, ILS approach, 
now what we would do is we would disconnect the autopilot. Now remember, I'm going to cover this now again. If I disconnect the autopilot now, you get this constant looped warning. Okay, you must press the button again to clear it. Okay, and you can just put the autopilot back in. It can be reconnected. You can put the other one back in and continue with the auto land if you want to. It's not a stick. Once it's broken, it can go back together. Uh, that's it really. So they're the two types of approaches that we're going to look at. One thing to note, you must physically set your thrust levers to idle before you do the auto land. Why is this? Well, when the aircraft flares, it disconnects the auto thrust and will just jump back up to your thrust lever. So if it's at 70%, it's going to jump to 70%. So make sure your physical thrust lever is at idle okay, before you do the auto land. Okay, so you join us turning on to a downwind for runway 32 right for the VOR approach in Toulouse. What is different from this VOR approach to the last one we did where we flew it as an RNAV overlay? Well, we're going to fly this one as a conventional approach. So, what does that mean? Well, there's a few things that we have to set up. First of all, we have to set the selectors to VOR. Then we make sure we set our minima again, 980. Should we set our bug to 980 and then we can see that this window here is opened up because we had this selector set to VOR so when this is set to VOR this becomes undashed so we can see that Toulouse is identified it's in manual mode and then we need to set our inbound course now this is from the chart the VOR chart so our inbound course is 3 21, 321. So that's set. We've got that set, that's set, and it's all looking good. How are we going to capture ourselves onto this approach? When we did the ILS approach, we pressed the land button. When we did the RNAV approach, we used the flight management system. And with the VOR approach, what we need to do is use the VOR lock, the VOR lock button, this one here. So when we press this button and the select is in VOR, it will arm VOR mode in blue and once it's capturing it will go VOR star just like the lock star and then it will go VOR once it's captured. So how are we going to fly the approach? Just like before we need to be slowed down so we want the aircraft to be basically fully configured by the time we start our descent. This is simply because it makes it easier for us to fly the approach and also easy for us to manage the descent. How do we monitor this type of approach? Well, we have a few modes. We have arc, we can see we have the radial and the course. And also on rows, we have the deviation here. And this is what we want, course 321. And this is our deviation left and right. I'm gonna leave this open and I'm gonna leave this on the map mode so we can see, see both what's going on. I prefer this one, but it's up to you because you can start to see when it comes alive and starts to come a bit closer. Okay, this seems a good time now. I can press the VOR lock. It goes straight into VOR star, and now it will capture the course as it goes in now. If we look at the window, it makes sense. I can see the runway straight ahead of us. When are we going to start our descent down to the runway? Well, the descent is at 12.7 miles. So 0.3 miles extra to that, so 13 miles, so 13 miles here. We will start our descent down at around 700 to 800 feet per minute. How are we going to do that? We're going to be using vertical speed. So I'm going to select vertical speed now to get vertical speed zero. And once this reaches 13 miles, I'm going to select minus 800. Okay, minus 800. Now we should start the descent down. And I can set the final approach speed. 134 knots. Now, first check is at 12 miles, so we're checking these distances against the charts. It says that we should be at 2,780. So we are a little bit low, so I'm gonna set 700 feet per minute now. Next check is at 11 miles, and at 11 miles we expect to be 2,470. 
So this is the whole thing with the approach. We're just checking the altitude versus the distance. You can even see out the window, it, it looks good. 2470, so we're 10 low, something like that, but I think the 700 feet per minute is gonna work out nice. Remember this VOR approach like the one we did before <coughs> is not completely aligned with the runway, so it's actually slightly offset. 10 miles, we're expecting to be 2,150. Basically exactly on profile. So what we have to do when we want to land off this approach? Well, we need to do a few things. Obviously we need to disconnect the autopilot. We must disconnect the auto thrust. We must also turn the flight directors off, just like the RNAV approach. So we disconnect the autopilot. We must disconnect. Why must we disconnect the auto thrust? For landing, it's not going to automatically bring the thrust back. Only we'll do that on, on an ILS approach. And then we turn both flight directors off. And now we just continue visually to land. So we can see straight ahead, see the runway, and we just follow the pappies in and land visually. That's it really for the VOR approach. You can see, not that complicated, fairly conventional to be honest. This is very much like a 737 would have. A um, little bit less complicated than doing it as the VOR but also you have to monitor it a lot more. So, depends which one you want to use, both, both work. And that's really it from today's video. We wanted to cover all the different types of approaches, how to use the EFB, and sort of tidy a few things up that we didn't go into a lot of detail with during the Return to Airliners and the New to Airliners series. So thank you very much for watching, and we hope to see you in the A310 very soon.